Hi, this is Tim. I'm going to show you how to get through the SL mail buffer overflow exploit. This is a recreation of an exercise that was used in Offensive Security's pen testing with Cali course that's used to prepare for the Offensive Security Certified Professional certification. You can see that I have um, upgraded to Cali 2.0 recently, and here I'm getting started with the Metasploit Framework Console. I'm just scanning the ports that will be used for the exploit itself. So we know it's a mail exploit, so we can scan port 25. And of course I went back and scanned port 110 as well. This is the XP computer and you can see it listening on port 110 here. So if we know that we have a SL mail service running, we can use the search exploit command at the Kali Linux console prompt. And you can see that we have several proof of concepts out there to choose from. It says both the path and uh, file name are listed in the search exploit results. We can copy that file to our home directory so that we don't worry about altering the original file. And you can see we have it now locally. You can see here they chose not to include the shebang so you can't run it directly from the command line but you'll have to invoke it with a Python command. And you can see the offset here. We're back on the XP computer here. We're going to get the immunity debugger started. And we'll need to attach to the SL mail process that has port 110 listed. Once we attach it, we'll see it load. And you'll need to press the play button right there. And you'll see in the lower right corner that it will say running, where it used to say pause. Looking at our script here, <clears throat> we'll need to edit it a little bit because we'll need to change our IP address. Of course, the IP address that was used by Mutz here at offsec.com is not the same IP address ha I have. But we can use the IP address that we got earlier from the scan and just put that here. And we can now launch that script. And head over to the XP results. We can take a look inside the debugger. We can see that we've crashed the program. And we've crashed it at the address that was listed in the script itself. This uh, where you see 7D. We know that the offset is correct because we got the um, address from the script into the Incended Instruction Pointer, or EIP, which you saw inside Immunity Debugger. Now we can test it again by building a new string of characters to send. We can do that with this Pattern Create tool that I'm looking for now. You can see I'm looking for that uh, name anywhere on the disk, and I'm sending any errors to dev null. And here is the result. So if we go into the appropriate directory, we can use this script by invoking it and giving it a number of characters. And the number of characters is how long we want the pattern to be. You can see we have this 5,000 character string now. And we 
can simply copy it here. And then open our Python script. And paste it in. It will comment out this earlier buffer, and we'll use this as our new buffer. Heading back to our XP machine, we can again attach the immunity debugger. And we'll have to do this play button again. Move back over to the Kali machine. We can rerun the same script we ran before which of course we've since modified. And that sends that to the XP machine again. And now looking in our debugger, we can see that it got stuck at 7A46317A. If we come back over here with our new knowledge of which pattern created the crash, we can put that pattern into our pattern offset script. And we can see that that happened at offset 4654, which is the same offset that was previously in the script. And now if we head back to our home directory, modify our script, and instead of sending the old buffer, we can make a new buffer that's 4,654 A's. You remember that hex 41 is capital A. <coughs> we can take this old one back out. At 4,654 capital A's. Take that one out. And then we can modify this line here so that we'll use our buffer. And we can just stick in there. I don't want to use A because I have a lot of A's already. But we can put in there B, C, D, E and we'll see which order the letters come out in. Previously we used the struct pack library which sent the characters backwards because of a little Indian correctness. But we'll go this way and we will know which way we need to send our address later. Let's go into the XP machine to make sure everything's still running. And then we can run this script again. And here is the XP computer again. <clears throat> well, you can see that we have DCBB returning back to our Kali machine. We can just see what's going on with our script there. <clears throat> you can see I typoed that, so we can switch that over to a C. Run it again. <clears throat> A little too soon that time. I have to restart it. <clears throat> and 
Now we've got it going again. <coughs> we run it again. And now you can see we have the letters we expected. So we know now that we can get anything we want into the extended instruction pointer and we can get things into memory that the stack pointer will point to. So we just need to figure out how to get from the instruction pointer to the stack pointer. So what we'll do is look for modules that might have a jump ESP instruction at a predictable location. If we can find one of those, we should be able to use it to get into the stack itself. So we'll go into go back into immunity debugger and we'll, we can use various uh, Mona commands. Mona is a Python module that you can install into immunity debugger. So once we have it attached and running we can just put in here Mona modules and it will give us all the modules that are loaded inside that process. So we want the first four columns to be false. Those are all various protection mechanisms. And we want OSDLL to be true. And you can see that one that satisfies these desires is the SLMFC DLL. So we'll use that one. Here in the menu, you can go to reverse engineering and then NASM shell. It doesn't quite work, and I have reported that to the Kali Linux uh, maintainers. But from there, you can easily just go down one menu so we can find NASM shell from this directory. And you can see it's just in the exploit submenu. Now I mentioned we want to jump ESP command, so we can just put in here JMP ESP, and we get that as FFE4 in hex. Back into that running process, we can use another Mona command to find that uh, jump ESP command that we're looking for with this Mona find dash S xxe4 and the module that we want to look inside of. So we have a number of results here. We just need to use one of them as where we put that uh, BCDE earlier. The final thing we're going to do is make the payload so we can stick that behind the jump ESP command. We'll do that with MSF Venom and you can see it there. I had constructed the um, command ahead of time so I could just paste it there. And now we have this long string which is the shell code that we will put into this Python script that we've been building. You can see that's the original shell code that uh, they used in their proof of concept. But we'll use this shell code. We'll fix this um, address up right here one of the addresses that we found inside that SLMFC DLL. We can run this now.
And when we go over here, you can see we did not have a port 1433 running, and now we do. And that was opened by the shell code. If we go back to our MSF console, we can use exploit multi handler and set the payload to match the payload that we had built for the exploit itself. Once we have those options correct, we can run that module. You can see I set the R host incorrectly at first. <coughs> so we can run that module now. From here you could improve your position somewhat by getting into an interpreter shell. But for now you have at least command execution that you got through a remote code buffer overflow vulnerability. Thanks for watching.